Hi guys, so welcome to week seven uh, in class practice session. Um, and we'll be covering week seven in class uh, practice. Um, so let me share my screen. Um, so we have the week seven in class practice. It's basically um, uh, a data, international authority database. And it basically uh takes uh, different international organizations um um like african union ASEAN, um, um and uh, different collaborate or organizations between different collaborative countries caribbean community central african economic union and it basically tracks their for uh for for a bunch of years starting from 1963 uh, till uh, 2013. So it, it tracks from 1919 to 2023, 2013, but obviously not a lot of countries would have data as far back, going back uh, to that time. Uh, but it basically tracks uh, the power or um, systematic information and exercise of authority across seven policy functions. So agenda setting, rule making, compliance, monitoring, norm interpretation, dispute settlement, and enforcement. Um, so um, this is what the data looks like. Um, so let's get into the questions. So uh, question number one, A, consider the following hypotheses. The average normalized authority score from 1919 to 2013 years for the association of SE Asian nations, ASEAN, is equal to the average normalized authority score from for the North Atlantic. What is the size, mean, and standard deviation of each sample? Now, uh, it's always good to create a summary table uh, from your data. And uh, we've been covering this for the past few weeks. So I'm not going to get into detail of how to create this summary table, but I'll quickly show you. Um, so what you want is you want to insert a pivot table. Um, so you can select all the data and then you can say insert pivot table. Okay, so you've already selected the data and you want to create in a new worksheet. Um, so in summary, we want our um we want our IO name, which is the name of the organization, rows. Um uh, and then we want our uh like different minimum, maximum, uh so minimum of agenda setting, maximum of agenda setting. So we put our values here. So we say minimum, uh, change from sum to minimum. And similarly, we put uh, we do maximum. And so we do value field setting and set maximum. So we do this uh, continuously for uh, all the variables. So if the summary sheet is already created here. So you can just keep doing this for agenda setting, um, normal authority and rule making. So we can do this for these three variables uh, because that, these are the ones we'll be using. And so we do minimum, maximum, agenda, standard deviation and count for uh, the variables. Uh, so once you get this, um, once you get this pivot table, um, so what you want to put here is you want to put the count, the mean, and the standard deviation. So if you go here in the summary table and um, what you can do is you can look for the um, ASEAN, which is Association of uh, Southeast Asian Nations. And so you can pick uh, the value for standard deviation and average of um, normal authority, right? Uh, so because we, we are doing it for average normalized authority. Um, so the um, mean is, so what you can do is you can also use, a, you can use a VLOOKUP function, but in this case, you can quickly input the values so one thing that you can do on the uh, sheet here is, so well, 
uh, one good practice is to not actually use uh, the pivot table itself. Like once you create, you can copy the data from pivot table. And uh, let's come here and let's delete this. So you can paste the values as, oh, sorry. So you can copy all this data and then you can paste it here as values. Um, and so then you will not, once you're applying filters, you won't be messing with the pivot table, which might be connected to your other data or other sheets. So in case you want to avoid that, so you can do this and, um, this will make it easier for you to, um, um, apply filters and, um, you know, um, do different data transformation. It's always good to do that. Uh, so what you can do is you can apply filters on this sheet. And once you apply filters, uh, then you can um, select the Asian ASEAN. And then uh, we had the other uh, was NAFTA. So you can say, I want ASEAN and you want NAFTA, North Atlantic, right? So here in their normal... So their average, this is the average, and this is their standard deviation, and this is their count, right? So we have that here. So the count, the average, and the standard deviation. You can also use VLOOKUP, but you can do it in this way also. So then question number two is, uh, part B is calculate the standard error for the average of each group. Um, so we want to calculate the standard error. And if you go to the functions here, uh, we have the standard deviation. So the the formula is a standard deviation divided by square root of n, right? So here uh, we have uh, for ASEAN, we can take the um, standard deviation here, which is this divided by square root of this. So this is essentially what we're doing. We're saying this divided by square root of this. And then similarly for NAFTA, because the standard deviation is zero, so then your standard error would be zero. So then you calculate the pooled standard error for the mean of both groups. So SE pooled is just a standard error of both squared and then taking a square root of so because one value is zero, so then the answer would be, the pooled standard error would be equal to just this value. But uh, you really come across st standard error, which is equal to zero. Um, so then uh, once you have the, considering the information you have for pooled standard error and average and a level over, do you reject or fail the, uh, fail uh, uh, this, uh, reject this hypothesis? So now what you can do is you can, um, um, you can create this table um, that we covered in the last session also. So if you go on this sheet here, and um, so our hypothesis was that the average normalized authority score is equal to the, so the average normalized authority score of ASEAN is equal to North Atlantic Free Trade Agreement. So basically our, uh, H naught is that uh, the mean of ASEAN is equal to mean of NAFTA, right? So this is our uh, null hypothesis. So what we are going to do is if you want to create this table, so if you go here, uh, what you can do is you can um, apply a filter and you can only keep uh, ASEAN and NAFTA in it. So let's go there. Um, so we have NAFTA here and then we have ASEAN. And so you had this tool pack here. I showed you how to get this. So you do this and once you click that, it will open. So we are going to do, uh, if you come here, uh, 
So we are going to do unequal variances because you know they are two uh, they are two different organizations and then the count is different, right? So we are assuming that this is unequal variances uh, because n are different for both these. So you go to the sheet here and you say, okay, I want to do t test with two sample, assuming unequal. Uh, sorry, sorry, unequal variances. So variable one would be your data for ASEAN and your normalized authority, you are going to give it the data here. So your variable one range would be all the data for ASEAN. So you can go down and select fill ASEAN here. And then your data variable two range. And remember, you have to always pick the uh, one value above the origin value because Excel assumes that there's a header. So we can simply just pick this value. It's not going to include that in this coin calculation. Uh, so for NAFTA, we give this value, right? And we hypothesize mean differences that we assume that there's no difference. And we want our... Um, let's create a new sheet for this. So we want our uh, output to be on sheet 2, A1, right? So... So what you can do is sometimes, you know, um, this, uh, it will create issues. So what you can do is you can create a new sheet and I copy all the data from this sheet here. And like paste it on a new sheet. So let's say here and you paste it as values, right? Um, and, um, uh, so once you have this, so this is the data for ASEAN. Um, and just make sure that uh, the column that you are um, referring to, like normalized authority here, it's in numerical form. Um, so we can format ourselves and we can say we want this in numbers, right? Um, So we do normalize authority. And so we can go here and then we can say, um, okay, so we want to pick this column. So I was, sorry, I was picking the wrong column earlier. So we go here and um, uh, it's all just good to do your formatting and uh, part of it column width. Uh, So we want this uh, data, right? So what we can do is let's close this and open a new tool here on this one. Um, so variable one would be your ASEAN. Um, and so we can pick all the values. Uh, let's, let's actually hide all these columns that we don't need. Okay. Yes. So 
So you want all these well, data from here till uh, for ASEAN till here. And then for this, we can select all this data from here to for NAFTA. And then hypothesis, I mean difference is zero. And let's say we want our data to be here, published here. Right. So now we have that. And uh, what you can do is because it picks the header as whatever the first row you gave the data, so you can change. So this is ASEAN and then this is NAFTA. So yeah, so you have this table and uh, we have this table and also in the key. Uh, it's similar to this. So uh, one thing to, you can check is observation. So you, you know, you had 47 observations for ASEAN and 20 observations for NAFTA. So you can see here, okay, 47, 42, that's right. And then, so what you look at is the P value and that P value is very, very small. So you can see here 0. 0.000. So the P value for the two tail test is less than 0. 0.5. So we have enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis. So we have evidence that supports that the normalized authority score of RCI and F are statistically different, right? So this is how you do the test. Um, okay. Uh, so now divide the data in two groups, countries with average agenda setting scores above, greater than or equal to the mean, and below the mean. Uh, from the full data set, divide the data in two groups, this time by organizations with average rule making scores above, and create a, a contingency table. So if we go here on our data, uh, that we had here. Uh, in the summary, sorry. So, uh, we created this summary. We copied, copied and pasted our summary uh sheet here. So let's select all right. Um, so what we want is is our country above above uh, agenda setting above average agenda setting and is our country above average uh, what was the question uh, rule making right rule making right so we want to check for these so what you can do is you can uh do an if statement and it will tell you if the country is above or below um so if we go here and we see the average of agenda setting here this is the so this is the uh this is the average right of agenda setting uh now we want to check if uh, we want to put a condition and see if the country is uh, uh, is above this average or not. So you can simply say that if, uh, so logical test is that you are checking that is the average value of that, of that sorry, organization greater than the average here. And this is this uh will stay constant, right? Um so for for do to do that, you can put the two dollar sign. So this is your logical test. If true, then you say yes. And if uh false, you say no. Right. Um Yeah, so you see here, this says that it is not above uh, 
safety agenda. Uh, so you see here the average of agenda setting for this organization, African Union, and it's 0 0.38. But the average total is 0 0.45. That's why it says no. So now what you can do is you can simply drag and drop this down uh till the uh so it will uh, it will tell you which can which organizations are above the average score and which are so similarly you can do the same thing and so if you go to our summary sheet um uh, so what you want to do is you want to say uh instead of uh yes or no you want to say low or high so anything that is above the average is uh high and everything anything that is above the below the average is low so let's say if it is above the average it's high and if it is below the average then it is low right and then you can drag and pop. and similarly we can do the same thing for rule making so if uh the average of rule making is greater than um the overall average of rule making and you want to keep this column constant then high and if it is false then you say um, low right so this is uh, essentially what you uh, oh this is how you and you just remove yeah so this is how you divided the uh, data into two groups that there, there are organizations which are rated high, which have their agenda, which have their uh, average agenda setting score above the overall average of the population, and then low are the ones which have below the average of the uh, uh, overall population, right? So once you do this, uh, so you divided the two groups, uh, and then you want to create a contingency table for agenda setting. Um, and create a table of expected values based on the observed. So um, if you go to this, this guy to uh, sheet here, uh, what, what they have done is basically um, created a pivot table, which basically counts that if the rulemaking is low, so on, on your, on your uh, rows are the rulemaking. So this is, uh, these are, rule making low and high and this is the agenda setting uh, low and high so you can create this pivot table um, and the way you can do it is um, if you go to this sheet here and you can simply just select this data and you can say insert pivot table and, and sorry new worksheet um, so um yeah so if you go here you put this as low and then you put the rule making as columns and then you can put the as values right um so this is basically what's happening here um uh, we can put the rows uh or you can put the actually the way it is done in here is um i think we had yeah agenda setting as the columns and the rule making as row so we can go here and we can change this to this as rows and then an agenda setting as columns. Um, yeah, so basically, uh, this is, uh, this is just showing you, uh, that this is, uh, high and low, uh, rule making and then high and low, uh, agenda setting, right? And then, so this is, uh, these are the, so like there are nine countries which have nine unions or uh, organizations which have high uh, rulemaking and high agenda setting. There are uh, seven countries which have um, low uh, rulemaking, but high agenda setting, so, so on and so forth.
So this is the table that you want to build. And if you go here in the chi-square test, uh, we have this table here. Right. So, um, so we have this table, um, and what we can do is that we can then, once we have this contingency table of observed values, then we can create a, a, a table of expected values. If you go here, um, given the formula for that, um, uh, once we create this uh, contingency table, um, so empty uh, cells in the expected table. So it's basically uh, that if, when when you're trying to calculate a value, uh, sorry here. If you if you're trying to calculate the value here, so it's a uh, it's low agenda setting score and low rule making score. So basically, you take the product of the row and the product of the column that this value is in, right? Uh, so you take the uh, product of the row, to row total, which is this, and this divided by the total, right? So in this case, what you're doing is, um, here is that you are, let me put this formula again, you are doing this multiplied by this, and then divided by this. And so you're doing it for all the uh, values. So here you're taking the total of this multiplied by this divided by this. And for this value, you are taking the total of row here multiplied by this and divided by. So this is how you get the expected value. Now, once you get the ex these expected values, then you uh, have to calculate the observed minus expected square uh, into x uh, divided by expected. And once you, and so a sum of all these will give you the chi square. So you simply just do the observed minus expected. So in this case, you want to do observed, which was this minus expected, which was this. Um, and that divided by the expected, uh, oh, sorry, I forgot the square. So here we do this minus this and we give it the, oh, this we square it and then divide it by, so this is your, so we do it for all the, so basically for this, we do, let's do this one also. So uh the observed value minus the expected value and square them up and then that divided by the expected value uh, right so we do that and then we sum all of these four values um and that is your chi square and so your degrees of freedom is basically uh, the number of variables. Uh, so for the agenda setting score, there are two possibilities, right? Uh, there's the uh, low and high. And similarly for rulemaking, there are two possibilities, low and high. So you are going to take, so your degrees of freedom would be if you go here, so your degrees of freedom is calculated by number of categories for rulemaking minus one multiplied by number of categories for agenda setting. So we have uh, two categories for agenda setting, two minus one multiplied by rulemaking, two categories minus one. So it will be equal to one, right? And then your theoretical uh, chi-square, you can then calculate it uh using the um so you can use this function chi square distribution and what you can do is 
And this formula is uh, chi square dot distribution. And what it takes is it takes the x, which is the chi square value um, that you have here that you calculated, degree of freedom, uh, this value, and then you want to do true for cumulative distribution function. So you want a cumulative value, right? So this is your theoretical chi square. Um, and basically what you can do is once you calculated this, um, if your calculated chi square is higher than the theoretical, you can reject the null. Um, so your calculated uh, chi square is 6.3 and your theoretical is 0 0.988. So you are going to reject the null hypothesis, right? Um, the calculated chi-square exceeds the minimum theoretical chi-square. Therefore, we reject the null hypothesis and support the agenda setting authority and rule making authority have a statistically significant relationship because your null hypothesis was that there's no statistical significant relationship. And you can also use another uh, function. So you can say, uh, you can do chi-square test. Um, and for this, you have to give it the actual range. So you want to give it the um, this actual range here, right? And then the second argument is your expected range. So you give it the range here. And it will also uh, calculate for you the chi-square, uh, the p-value for chi. So this p-value is 0 0.011, uh, 0 0.012 basically, and it is less than 0 0.05. So you can reject the null hypothesis and accept the alternative hypothesis. So this is another way of doing it. So this was basically week five, week seven uh, in class practice. Um, I'm going to cover this in the class also. And if you have any questions, I'm going to cover this in the lab session also. So if you have any questions, please uh, ask me during those time, or you can also ask them in office hours. Um, and I hope this, this was useful. Thank you.